Hello everyone, Mark here, aka Strepto, and I'm going to be doing first ever video review of some FPV gear. So we're looking at uh, a bunch of different cameras today. Specifically though, we're going to be looking at this little fellow, which is the second beta of the new Sky camera. And um, to compare that to, we've got the uh, first beta, which some of you all know how awesome that was. And um, you know the old standard PZ04, whatever they are, is board cameras as well, just to have a look there. So form factor wise, obviously, the new guys are a lot smaller. And uh, the first thing that you notice about the second beta is that it's this funky aluminium design rather than uh, the old steel casing or even the plastic ones have come out. Same sort of uh, basic design but uh, it's a little bit sleeker. It's kind of got a nice retro-y steampunk look about it. You could almost grease that up and use it as a probe if you're an alien. So here we've got our three basic contenders. Uh, the new sky cam on the left and the uh, traditional board cams on the right. You can see that the new camera is much smaller and also much lighter. And the image quality, well, you'll see it's basically the same. So it's also just worth having a quick look at the full package that you get with one of these little fellows now. Um, they've sent me this new and improved FPV cable. You can see it's got a separate plug for the video signal and the power. So you can split those off, you don't have to rearrange and start making your own custom cables, which is quite a nice camera itself. And a separate configuration cable. Now that actually goes into the back here there we go. So we've actually got two ports here. One is for the configuration cable and the other one's for the FPV cable. So you can actually take this out to the field with you and just whack that in there and do some configuration on the fly without having to come home, plug it in to your goggles or your TV and using a separate cable to do a bunch of configuration stuff. So that's actually very handy. So we have the trusty kitchen scales out for comparison. Basic board camera, 14 grams, not so bad. The old PZ in the metal case, quite heavy at 51. Now you can get a plastic case for these now, I don't have one of those to compare the weight but they are much lighter obviously, so that's the way to go if you've got those, especially for a mini quad. Uh, the first beater of the Sky camera, 28, 29. So that's not so bad, but it's also not great, especially when you compare it to a, a bare board camera. A beta 2 made of aluminium comes in at 17 for me, 18 with the following wind. Their official weight is 18 grams, there you go. So um, compared to the naked board camera, that's almost the same, plus you're in a smaller form factor and you've got the protection around you, so that's a good thing. But how do they perform is the key. So let's go to the field and have a look. Our test bed today is going to be the Go Mini from Untested Prototype, which uh, I've been very kindly given the frame of and have it up and running. So just a quick and dirty mount for the camera is going to be up here. I'm going to swap those over, do a little bit with the old sky, a little bit with the new sky. And then we might even stick the gigantic old PZ up on there and have a look as well. So here we go, and you can see this is the first Sky Cam beater, and look at all that lovely chromanoise and oversaturated colours. It was pretty yicky to fly with, I can tell you that. This is the new Sky Cam beater, and it's looking so much clearer. We've turned on wide dynamic range, and um, yeah, you can see everything's nice and crisp. And this is the old PZ04, 20, whatever they are. Um, the lens is a little bit out of focus, this one's been banged around a bit. Also a good picture, but yeah. Right, let's go for a fly. So this is the first Skycam beater. And we can see all the lovely oversaturated colours. You can actually tune them to take that out a little bit, but um, all that noise is still there. And it's actually, uh, it's a little bit worse in your goggles when you're flying. A little bit of 
interference here. Um, yeah, and you can see when you go into a dark area, it made it really quite difficult to see what the hell was going on. It did adjust the brightness fairly quickly, but um, yeah, just all of that noise. As you can see the noise and the leaves blend together quite nicely. This is a fun little circuit of the local park that I've worked out. Obviously not flying it terribly well here. There we go. And finish with a few loops. Okay, Sky Cam Beta 2. Much, much better from the word go. Um, all that lovely sparkly noise, and we've got a fairly clean image throughout. I'm using pretty much the standard settings here, and um, I think I've switched on the wide dynamic range option, so that brings up the, the dark bits and the shadows a little bit. Uh, and I might have tweaked the white balance, I can't remember actually, but basically it's running pretty much stock settings. So you could probably even ring a little bit more performance out of this. Um, if you sat there and, and tweaked it for the current conditions. Um, I haven't tried this one at night yet, but it does seem to switch to night mode quite easily and quickly. And uh, when I fired it up at home the first time, it was actually in black and white mode already. So it's a little bit more sensitive, I think, to the darkness. Here we go up and around. Whoops. And you can see that the lens flare is not too bad. We're coming into the dark area again. It's actually quite well lit in there, so quite good for this sort of flying. And here we have the old favourite. I didn't realise how out of focus this lens was until I started looking at this footage. That was a nice takeoff, wasn't it? Um, yeah, this has had the usual tweaks applied. Wide dynamic range, dark corner compensation, whatever that thing's called. Uh, probably set the white balance differently again, but um, you know, the colours don't, don't make that much difference when you're flying. What you want is to be actually able to see things. So obviously this is, these are tried and true. Very good. A bit bright coming out of the dark area there. So um, you've got to be aware of that. It just behaves slightly differently, but as you can see it's also a very flyable camera, but for uh, 50 grams versus 18 grams. Yeah, I don't argue with that. There we go. Getting pretty scratchy there because I'm flying over myself and there's a gigantic tree in the way. Got a lot 5.8. And coming in. Come on, get on with it. I don't normally sit down to fly, actually, I prefer standing up, but um, yeah, it's just easier on the day. And I think we might finish with a. Uh, uh, another view of that last lap, this time through the actual GoPro, so you can see what it really looked like. And this is the exact same lap you just saw, only the GoPro footage. So, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, it was fun doing this little review. These little sky cams look quite nice, depending on the price. Um, they may well be the next go-to camera for FPV stuff, especially with minis, because they're small and light, and uh, seem to work quite well. So it's all going to come down to the price. Uh, I suspect that they're going to be quite reasonably priced, and probably less than the bigger, older board cameras. So um, yeah, we'll have a win there. Anyway, I'll let you watch the rest of the lap, and we'll catch you next time. Bye now.